Welcome back to the Lost River Wood Shop. Today, we're making some more hybrid blanks. Stick around. Please stand by for an important announcement. So when I was filming this video last night, I forgot to include a section about the blank giveaway that I wanted to do for the 500 subscribe subscriber mark. Stick around until the end of this video to find out how you can win your own blank. We now return you to the regularly scheduled program. So unfortunately, there was a little technical difficulty when I made these honeycomb hybrids. I kind of forgot to press record on the camera, so you don't get to see these made. However, you do get to see a batch being made today, possibly of these, because I still have two more to go. So there's that. So we got two different molds set up here right now. This one is set up to do hybrid blanks with Pecky Cypress. And this one is my block mold that I've set up to do something with the offcuts from these parts. And we'll talk about this in just a, a minute or so. So what I've done with these is they've already been stabilized and they've been run through the bandsaw so that they're just shy of seven eighths. So they fit down into the blocks just fine. They've been sanded, cleaned up with denatured alcohol, and arranged in the molds and um, then placed in each cavity that I plan on, on putting each piece in. And there are multiple pieces in here. Like you can see, this one has three. So the plan right now is to fill the cavity part way, push the blank down into it. And what I hope to do by doing that and I'll probably do it this way, is to get these holes filled with resin. Yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm going to do it that way or if I'm going to do it this way and let it come in from the side. I'm afraid it might trap some bubbles that way. So probably end up being like that. And if I do it like that, I might not have to push it down into it, but... Uh, you know, there's holes on the bottom side. So I want to make sure there's at least resin on the bottom to start with to fill up from the bottom. So that's what we're going to do. On these offcuts, I'm going to try a little something different. Um, I'm going to put in... <laughs> looks like I'm shedding again. I'm going to put in clear resin that's been colored with... Uh, a dye or an ink. Uh, more than likely, I'm going to use an alcohol ink uh, called Sailboat Blue, if you can see that. Uh, this is a type of ink that uh, Heath Knuckles uses for his spheres that he turns. And possibly add a second color and maybe pour it in from two sides. I really haven't decided on that yet. I'm not sure how well the resins will look mixing together. So I may just do the blue. And the, the intent of this is to just cover up to the top of the wood and cut these after they've set, sand them down, polish them, and turn them into pendants. Um, I, I think it's a, a decent idea. I've seen things like this before on Facebook and Pinterest, and it's, you know, it's a good way to make a little extra money off of your, um, your waste. It's not necessarily, you know, stuff that you need to throw away. You just have to think a little bit outside the box to come up with something else to do with it. So the first thing we're going to do is get the work area set up and start mixing some resin. I've got the molds, the blanks, and the, the cutoffs set. They're, they're in place, everything's ready to go. What I need to do now is figure out how much resin I'm going to need for each of these blocks. There's a formula you can use that tells you how much resin is needed for each cavity. And that's length times width times height times the density of the resin you're using. And for alumilite, that density is 0.554. And the answer it gives you is in ounces. You know, thank God for calculators. So for instance, with the case of the blue mold here, 
you take length times width times height, which is 7 eighths by 7 eighths by 5 and a quarter. You multiply those three together. Then multiply it by 0.554, which gives you, I believe, 2.23 ounces per cavity. Multiply that by 4, and that would give you the entire mold. Now, what I'm looking at is cavities that are already partially filled with wood. And I need to estimate how much of the cavity is taken up by wood, and then reduce the amount of resin by that much. So I'm going with a rough number of about 80% of the cavities are filled by wood. Some a little more, some a little less, but I think on average, I think the 80% is a good number. And so what I have to take is the, the uh, 2.23 ounces, or 63 grams, per each cavity, and multiply that by 0.2 to give me the amount of resin that I need to pour. The other thing I'll recommend is the other night, when I was pouring these hybrids, I got uh, a little flustered. I, I didn't have everything set out, ready to go and decided at the last minute that I was going to do multicolor pours into each one. So I ended up pouring all the resin out into one container, mixing it up to get the reaction starting, and pouring it out into separate containers for each color, uh, which is a good idea. However, I didn't have my workstation prepped. So I didn't have the colors picked. I didn't have them set out. I didn't have the stirring sticks picked uh, or set out. I didn't have the die is ready if I was using any of those. So if you're doing a multicolor pour, make sure you have everything laid out, ready to go. I've even gone so far as to mark on the cups, dropsies, still got them. Uh, I don't know if you can see this very well, but here's my calculations. But I've marked on the cup there of what's the what the weight is supposed to be in the cup and what the color is supposed to be. And I've also done that on this cup. So what I'm gonna do is mix up the total amount of resin that I need, which is 150 grams. So I'm gonna need 75 grams of A, 75 of B. Get that all mixed up and get the reaction started. And then pour out 25 grams each of these and mix in some Caster's Choice Emerald Green and Caster's Choice Platinum Silver. Now, these two colors will be used to fill in the blue mold. So there'll be swirled colors of silver and green going in and out of the wood. And I think that'll look really cool once it's turned. It'll be really similar to the ones that I did on my first hybrids video. Uh, that one was platinum, silver, and blue. And those really turned out nice. I just messed up the blank when I went to turn it. And that was totally my fault. And for this one, I'm going to be using, you know, for the block mold, I'm going to be using a uh, alcohol ink, similar to what Heath Knuckles uses on his channel. So this takes a little bit longer to mix into the resin, um, but it gives a really nice clear color and isn't quite as concentrated as the Illuminolite dyes. Uh, those dyes, all it takes is a little bit and next thing you know, you've got, boom, way too much color. So next step, start mixing the resin. So off camera, I went ahead and decided to pour just a little bit extra to be on the safe side. So I've upped it to a grand total of 180 grams. I'd, I'd rather have too much resin than not enough. So that means I'll need 90 grams of A and 90 grams of B for the pour of everything. So I'm gonna start by mixing that into this single cup. And you can see how there's still a little bit of cloudiness and some threads in there. Go back to stir. have this smaller scale for smaller pours just like this. I can get a little more accurate read since this reads down to the tenth of a gram. And I'll give you some advice with this kind of scale. Do not wipe it off with acetone because it will melt plastic. And now we mix in the colors. And by dropping in some of this blue. And 
some silver. And some green. And now you can move all this stuff out of your way. That is ready to pour. I'm only going to fill these one at a time to make sure that I've got enough resin. Yeah, there's not enough to even start another one, so I'm just going to pour these into two that are in there and I'll know better for next time that I need to pour more. And I'm just moving these around to make sure that there's resin all around the, the blanks so that all the holes have a chance to get filled in. These are going to look really cool. I can tell already. You see how these don't just blend right together. Okay, so to avoid any issues, I'm going to go ahead and pull this wood out so that I only have these two planks with resin and wood in the pot. This is my rack from P Town Subby. Great rack, highly recommend it. It's specifically sized for the Harbor Freight pressure pots. So if you are planning going down that road and buying some pressure pot or buying a pressure pot, um, definitely look into one of these casting racks. It just makes life so much easier. All right, into the pot. Whoa. Hello. Take this off. Remember I said to have everything laid out and ready? I forgot one thing. I didn't use mold release. Now that's not going to be that big a deal with the molds that I use, the silicone mold uh, doesn't bond to the resin at all, so those will pop right out. Uh, the block mold that I made is made from uh, cutting board material. It also doesn't stick. It, it sticks a little bit, but all it takes is a little knock. Uh, I'll probably have to take off one of the ends and uh, give it a good knock and it'll pop right out. So everything's down in the pot. We got two hours to wait. Really? Two hours? Yeah. You might want to go get some popcorn. So here's one of the blanks that I just poured. This is the Pecky Cypress that is in the silver and green. I made two of these, that, as you saw earlier, and these have actually both sold. What I would do different with this blank is, while I may cut down the side to fit into the mold better, 
I'm not going to cut the top. The reason being is once it was covered in resin, you really couldn't tell, yeah, excuse me, couldn't tell where the wood was. It was all just green and silver resin. So I actually had to sand this down to be able to see where the wood is. So if I left it proud of the mold, even if it was covered in resin, you'd still be able to tell where it was in the mold instead of being even with it and being able to be completely covered. So lesson learned there. I will be making more of these. If you're interested in getting one of these, I'm actually calling it uh, Swamp Gas. And I'll be selling these on my Facebook page. So there'll be a couple more available this week. And then I think I'm going to have to buy some more Pecky Cypress. But that shouldn't be take too long to get in. Now for the hybrid honeycomb blanks. These are the four that I've made so far. This one is sold and will be on its way actually overseas. So I don't want to say too much about that. But this one is the gold honeycomb that was also made with the green and black. So this will provide an interesting blend of colors once turned. This one is the red honeycomb that has been encapsulated in the platinum, silver, and blue. Now I like to call this one Spider-Man, but I know I can't sell it like that, so... Maybe it'll be, I, I'm, I'm not even sure what it'll be. It'll, maybe I'll just call it the Superhero Series and have uh, a couple of different ones. Because I've got an idea for the blue one where I make it with red and gold, uh, like uh, Superman's colors. And my daughter pointed out to me that this one, since it's black and red, could be Black Widow. So you got the... Uh, the platinum silver, red, and then the contrasting color is the white from the honeycomb. This one is going to look really cool when turned. And this is the last one that I've made so far. It's got the purple honeycomb with a gold. And you see how that uh, shimmers against that purple color. And the, uh, the platinum silver as well. Um, probably no name for this one. But what I'm thinking is swap out the Platinum Silver for green and call it the Mardi Gras blank. Now I also wanted to show you these. These are cutoffs from the oval pour that was done on the Evil Dead blanks. These have been cut. They're three quarter inch square by five and a quarter inch long. So they're perfectly sized for pen blanks. There's the other one. These are also up on my Facebook page for sale, as well as these three will be, or actually are. These three are up for sale. This one has already sold, so it's not available anymore. So if you have any interest in these, go to the link for my Facebook page in the description below, and they'll be on there. You have to click the Shop Now button to take a look at them and see what the price is. All right, one other thing that I learned on these blanks is pouring the resin over it and waiting for it to soak down is kind of troublesome. So what I'm going to do in the future is what I had originally planned for the Pecky Cypress. I'm going to pour the resin into the cavity and then take this, you know, the, the honeycomb insert and slowly let it settle into the resin. So I can pour the resin in, mix it up to get some nice swirls, and then just drop this in, let it sink to the bottom, and it will fill all those holes with the resin that's already in the mold. And I think that'll help with... Uh, the diffusion of the colors and make it a more interesting blank. All right, so that's it for this episode. I still have two of the honeycomb inserts left to be able to cast. So I will make a separate episode on casting those so you can see that up close and personal. I also have a ton of uh, 
burl cutoffs, curly cottonwood cutoffs, and various other pieces of wood that will be cut up and used for hybrid blanks. So we'll be able to film several of those in the future as well. I also plan on having some turning projects, so you'll actually see me doing something at the lathe for a change. Also, as a reminder, as I said in my last episode uh, on the shop notes, I have some cast-off blanks. These are blanks that I made that have some defects in them. If you've never turned a Lumilite and are curious to find out how it turns, these are all tubed for Sierra style pens. So this would be like the Mesa, the Gatsby, the Wall Street 2, any of those clones will take the bushings for this, or this will take those bushings. Let's strike that, reverse it. There's nine of these available, and once they're gone, they're gone, because hopefully I'm not going to be making any more defects. So for $2 a piece, plus shipping, you can try Illuminate out on your lathe to find out how well it turns. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to give away two blanks, like the ones you just saw that I made. It'd be two pecky cypress blanks. The twist will be that the winners will get to pick any two colors that they want mixed in with the wood. Uh, even if I don't have the color, I'll get it, because I need any excuse I can get to order my, more mica powder. So here's what you have to do. Number one, you got to be a subscriber. If you're not and would like a chance to win one of the blanks, hit that subscribe button. Two, you got to leave a comment on the video. Three, you got to live on the planet Earth. I'll ship the blanks anywhere. Doesn't matter. And four, eh, three's enough. That's all it's going to take. Be a subscriber. Leave a comment. Be a resident of the planet Earth. I think that's easy enough. I'll leave this contest open for a week, at which time I will select two people at random from the comments below. Uh, same person cannot win twice, so if your name is selected twice in a row, sorry, I'm going to pick somebody else. That's all there is to it, guys. Good luck. That's it for this week's build video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you like what I'm doing here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you like tonight's episode, make sure to hit that like button. Also, make sure to ring that bell so that you get notifications when I release a new video. I hope you all have a safe and productive week in your shops, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Ugh, me. To... What? What are you going to do with them? You're going to make them into blanks. <laughs> uh, I crack myself up sometimes. Nope, I'm going to use that one. Not going to use that one. That one I'm going to use. And you can try out... Uh... Yeah. Over. I hope I can fix that in post. That looks like hell. <laughs>